Hey TC, welcome to a very special edition of the G of Current. I'm Kira Ranieri. I'm Grace Bedingfield, and we're taking you all the way to your own classrooms and even Baked Pie Company. First up, we have reporter Riley Williamson giving us the latest on the fate of our very own Ram logo. Come next fall, visitors to TC will notice an entirely new look at Ensley Stadium, as the turf field will be replaced. The center of the field will then display Robertson's original Block R design in place of the current Ram. Athletic director Laura Beatty says the decision to replace the Ram was unanimous among the coaching staff. Well, as part of um, our turf getting redone at um, the end of this month, um, we had the opportunity to, our, our coaching staff had the opportunity to select what would go in the middle of our, of our field and it was a unanimous decision to put um, the T.C. Robertson Block R in the middle. The Block R has been a symbol of T.C. Robertson since the 1960s, according to Beattie. Well, the Block R has always been a staple of T.C. Robertson for years and years. Um, the, the, the Ram Head is actually not the original Ram Head. Um, the block R was the original R uh, when the school opened up in the early 60s. Varsity soccer coach Joshua Martin believes that having the block R will be a good thing for the school. I think it'll be something that we can identify us as being Robertson. Uh, there are a lot of Rams out there uh, in different uh, sports and different leagues and different teams, but there's only one Robertson. And so to have the R being in the middle of the field, I think it's a great thing. The fieldwork was scheduled to start in late May and be completed by football season. With the G of Current, I'm Riley Williamson. Thanks, Riley. And now, we'll take a moment of silence for the Ram. Reporter Sergio Padilla takes us on a journey into the world of an AP student during test season. Advanced placement, or AP testing, has kept TC's Robertson students busy as they prepare for the national exam. Senior Ashley Lim on how the classroom environment changes when the test gets closer. So normally we try to finish all our material that we need to cover like a month before the exam and then um, after we finish review or finish what we need to learn then it starts cracking down and we do a lot of review sheets and it's a lot more intense. I see a lot of people with their AP books studying. Senior Mitchell Stanick believes that AP testing is much more stressful than the state finals at the end of the year. Uh, a lot more uh, time and preparation has to be put in to, for the college boards test as opposed to uh, just whatever the, the final might be in the, uh, in the, in the class itself. Uh, a lot of teachers make them like music videos or uh, silly projects because at that point uh, everyone's pretty much done with their coursework. Sophomore Emily Lim shares on how soon she starts to prepare to study for the AP exam. Well this is my first year taking AP exams so I wasn't sure like how early to start or when it would be too late. So um, last week I took my first exam and I started studying for that about three weeks before but that was after the class and I looked over the material every once in a while, but actually started using the book and actually studying for it three weeks. Although AP exams are finished, students will still be required to take the state final as well. With the GF Current, I'm Sergio Padilla. Now, we'll go to reporter Kennedy Lecker, who tells us what Girl Up Club is really about. T.C. Robertson has recently been introduced to a national organization called Girl Up. Girl Up Club meets every Monday during Robertson's 30-minute study smart. Vice President of the club, freshman Allie Grace Papour, says that Girl Up means a lot to her. She says by informing students about what's happening to these girls, they are able to help them. Girl Up is a club about girl empowerment and teaching others about what's happening to girls in other countries that we don't know about. Founder and President of Robertson's Girl Up Club, freshman Jordan Mundy, believes that this club is a good way for us to help other countries that are not as fortunate. 
I found Girl Up, I was I think on some social media account and I found their social media account and it was just, I thought that would be a really great way to raise awareness at our school because a lot of these issues aren't talked about. English teacher Christina McMinn, sponsor of Robertson's Club, wanted to start this club after hearing about the terrorist group Boko Haram that kidnapped over 200 girls who, according to McMinn, simply wanted to get an education. The main reason I wanted to start Girl Up Club was because Jordan Mundy is such an outstanding individual, and if she is passionate about something, then I want to be passionate about it too. Mundy finds new information and shares it with the club every Monday. We're talking about how girls are lacking in education in a lot of these third world countries, and we're, we talk about this and we play games to learn about it and to get all the facts straight so that we know exactly what's going on and how we can help. Although hearing the name Girl Up Club, there could be some possible misconceptions on what the club is truly about. A common misconception with the Girl Up Club is that you have to be a girl to join. You don't have to be a girl, it's just about helping girls. I think some common misconceptions about Girl Up is that it's just about um, girls here and like girl power and maybe they think that we have sleepovers and curl our hair and paint our nails, but it is not that. I encourage all males, come to Girl Up Club. If you're someone who wants to know about humanitarian rights around the world, Girl Up Club is the club for you. With the GF Current, I'm Kennedy Rucker. Next, Olivia Sosar takes us off campus. Our first stop is Baked Pie Company, where reporter Grace Beddingfield gives us a scoop, or rather, the slice, on South Asheville's newest and upcoming dessert shop. In the summer of 2016, Kristen Fouts and her daughter were looking for a place in Asheville to devour a slice of homemade pie and sip on a warm drink. The two couldn't quite find the right place, and thus, Bake Pie Company was born. The atmosphere of Bake strives to provide a home-like, comfortable vibe. It is designed to be a unique experience in which one can sit, chat with friends, read a book, and eat some delicious pie made from scratch. Fawkes is the owner and creator of Baked. She has dedicated a lot of her time into her new company. We start early, so my pastry chef comes in at 4 a.m. every morning to bake pies. We can bake up to 90, 95 pies, especially on the weekends, per day. I wanted to stay in South Asheville. I've been here for 20 years. I hope to be here long term. I'd like to open some more locations in the future. Each day, they offer a different selection of pie flavors, ice cream, coffee, and tea. Each pie is crafted with fresh and high quality ingredients. They even have pie for dietary restrictions such as gluten-free, sugar-free, and vegan. The company is located on Longshills Road in South Asheville. Make sure to stop by and eat some pie. With the GF Current, I'm Grace Benningfield. And a super special thanks to Bakes for allowing us to film in their shop today. Next up, Emily Fine will take us to sports. Hey TC, as most sports seasons are winding down, several senior athletes are signing to colleges. Some of these athletes include Elise and EJ King, Davis Phillips, and Michelle Cobb. Reporter Riley Williamson spotlighted senior Coleman Baker through his tennis journey. With the school year coming to a close, some student athletes are committing to colleges to continue their sports career. Senior Coleman Baker is no exception. Baker is committed to Methodist University after being offered opportunities at other colleges to play collegiate level tennis. The school is amazing and I really wanted a small school. I mean I had opportunities to play D1 and I wanted to play D1 but um, I really just, Methodist was a good choice for me. They had a great campus, everybody loved me, I loved the team and I just fit really well there so that's what I chose and I'm so happy for my decision. After trying many sports when Baker was younger, he found that tennis was what he thrived in the most. Well, I tried every other sport and I absolutely sucked at every other sport. So I actually just picked up tennis one day and I've been playing it ever since. Baker believes that the hardest part of tennis is the physical element of the sport. It's very, it's very, very physically demanding compared to other sports. And a lot of people don't realize that because normally, like every match you play, you normally run maybe a mile, mile of just, just lateral movement back and forth and everything. And, uh, and you got to have such good hand-eye coordination to make contact with the strings and the ball at the same time. The tennis team had a record of this year of 12-2, and two, and Baker's favorite memory was winning their first playoff match. From this season, uh, I'd have to say when we won our first playoff match, I think we were so excited. Uh, now we get to play again, and it's going to be so much fun. We're really excited. The team made it to the first round of playoffs. Though they ended the season with a defeat, and Baker's high school career is over, his new college endeavors has yet to begin. With the GF Current, I'm Riley Williamson. 
And now the last package is brought to you by reporter Kennedy Rucker, who entertains us with a fun contest called the Whisper Challenge. How did the lamb clean her ice cream? How did the lamb cream an ice cream? Gosh dang it. How can a clam cram in a clean cream can? Oh, that's hard! <laughs> The walrus. <laughs> That's how I got it. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, went to Wales to watch walruses. We once we went to the rails to watch walruses. <laughs> 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 How can a clam cram in a clean cream can? Wait, did you say it? How can a clam cram in a clean cream can? Is it about cows? No. <laughs> What's it about? You put that. How can a clam cram in a clean cream can? I can... <laughs> oh my gosh. I wish to wash my Irish wristwatch. I wish to wash my dishwasher? <laughs> no. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of the GF Current. Make sure to check out Baked Pie Company located on Long Shoals. To check out the newest Rams recipes, click the link in the description below. On behalf of the GF Media staff, we want to wish you all a happy summer vacation. See you next year.